Radio P Productions. You with, oh, we got Frank Capone, two hot heads on activism with Mike Canya representing Mike Can today because he's working. And uh, I know you guys did a show this past Saturday, which I did not catch, which I'm going to catch when I get home. Tell us a little what brought you out and also got you guys to cover this. Yeah, so I, I ended up uh, bringing this story to Mike's attention. Uh, we've been talking about it for the last, you know, three or four weeks on our radio show. And. Uh, Probably like one of the only radio shows, you know, media outlets that is really talking about it and talking about the injustice that's going on here, you know. And um, so when we, when we, you know, followed the case and realized um, that Cam was still in jail, we were like, wait a minute, you know, like this is this is a transgression that that is against every activist, you know. This isn't a just a just against some young kid who wanted to say some stuff on Facebook, you know. Um, this is about us as activists and 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 what we can say and what we can do and the and the power that the government has or the state has to come in and you know lay the hammer down mm -hmm. and. So we came out today, you know, in mass with the people's hammer, you know, and uh, I just wanted to get up and encourage everybody to come out on uh, June 27th at 11 a.m. at the Lawrence District Courthouse here um, and uh, make sure that uh, we have bigger numbers than we had today and that we are going to um, do everything that we can to uh, make sure that Cam gets, him, gets, out, of, uh, gets out of jail and, uh, you know, justice is done. That would be great, Frank. Well, thank you, uh, you and Mike, covering it on the radio because that's uh, how I got news of it was through Mike and you know reading all the posts and the things that you guys did and then Garrett taking it to the next level to organize everybody here let's hope nothing like this ever happens again maybe we bring some awareness we're not trying to chastise the police or, or anything like that we know you're trying to do your job but think think before you do something like this because we live in a free speech society and we want to maintain that Exactly, and like you know, when you talk about the the police, right, and and the police have to do the job. Well, there's such a thing as officer's discretion, right? Where you know a, an officer can decide whether or not they want to take you in, or they you know for whatever charge it is. You know, I mean, because I'm sure plenty of people out there watching right now have been busted by a cop smoking some weed, and they just told you to put the weed out on the ground, stomp it out, and be on your way, right? Right. And so this this kid right now didn't do anything, didn't threaten anybody, and he's in jail, and 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 they were just like, I, you know, we heard a report that the officer who was on duty at the school didn't want to arrest him, so they had to send another officer to actually come and arrest him because the, the, the dude who was on, the officer that was on duty knew that it was bullshit. Well, all those people up there know it's bullshit. You know, you've got the prosecutor and everyone else, and they're all up there, you know, and they're laughing and they're joking, they're having a good time, and they're having a good time. but the fact of the matter is that the kid's in jail. He's in jail. He's locked up with criminals. It's like they have no mindset of what they're doing to this kid. They think more of what they're going to look like in their future, in their job, if this was, in fact, a real, let's say, terrorist case, if illusions of grandeur, you know? Yeah, exactly. No, they're Chewbacca right now with yeah. their illusions of grandeur. I mean, absolutely. And we're going to make justice happen here with the people's hammer. Very good. That's the people's hammer. Remember what I said. All of us joining together, if you don't know the family, look it up, okay? You need to support those, even those that you don't know, for the rights that you believe in. Because this could happen to you, could happen to me, could happen to anybody in your family. You'd want the support yourself, especially if you knew that injustice was being done like it's being done in this case right now. This guy, no introduction, you know him as uh, Rich Food Perceptions of a Mao Man on the KOP Production Counterculture Radio Network, and this man was getting very upset upstairs. In fact, after we left, he got the bailiffs uh, a little worried that they started calling uh, some uh, additional support, but we left just in time. Rich, you came down here, you, you, you tried to get out of work and push your stuff to come down here. What made you come down on somebody you don't even know like Cam? What made you come down to this? Well... I don't know this kid at all, never met him. In fact, I can barely pronounce his name. But the idea is, he's my brother. He is a fellow citizen. And by the very definition of patriotism, it has nothing to do with the love of my country, but the love of the people within it. My brothers, my sisters. And what I got from this case, by speaking to the father and seeing what's going on there today, is this kid was bullied at school. He was beat down, didn't want to go to school anymore, and decided to finally express himself in a way that he felt he could to regain his pride, his own redemption, make a no physical, actual threat. And the ha what happened was these bullies that did beat him up are the ones that complained to toy with him, to mess with him. Yeah, that, that we didn't bring up yet. That is true. It's the, the same bullies that beat him up reported him for his lyrics. And then you get to what we've seen here today, which is just disgusting. Now, the prosecution comes in and says they need more time. 
because 30 days isn't enough to go through somebody's hard drive. Meanwhile, if you give me your computer, I'll have it done in 30 seconds. Now, what they're doing is they're trying to take whatever they can for wording to twist it to whatever they can and however they can use it to further their own careers and further their own names. You have two young females in there prosecuting this that let go a, a rapist that raped a 15-year-old girl. Let him go on $2,000 bail. Yet this kid, because it's a big case now, they're going to sit here and play hardball. Well, you know what? I hope their careers fail. Welcome, welcome to Hotheads, where activism happens. We are here. What are we doing today, Frank? Well, we are going to start off the first hour today talking about uh, KBD and yeah. uh, the release of uh, Kami D. Uh, so the political prisoner is out, but it's not over. Uh, we still have a court date coming up on the 27th of June. Um, and uh, so we're going to be talking about that. We want folks to call in today uh, and express their support for Kami D or tell us how they feel about it, how they feel about the situation that the prosecutor in the state of Massachusetts apparently thinks that it's okay to curb somebody's First Amendment rights because we got scared. At any rate, our phone number here is 617-206-1050. That's 617-206. Six ten and he, fifty, and he was released. This he is absolutely big news. was. Yeah, that is. We a big got news. him out. We had a big uh, event. A lot of people showed up, and we're going to report on that event at uh, his court appearance. Yep. And then basically the next day was it that he was released, or was it was. It, two um, days later? it was. It was almost. A, it was just about a week. Yeah, on Thursday he was released. Yeah. And uh, we're really happy. We're excited, and and uh, I think we have a caller right now. Yeah, we have a caller. Let's hear what they have to say. Hello, caller. Do we have a caller on the line? Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Talk to me. They're yeah. on mute. I don't know. They're on mute. They'll come back. So we'll just keep talking. Six one seven six zero six four one two two. Caller, if you no, that's the old number. number. That's the old number. Hey, oh, yeah. hey, hey, Mike. Who's this? Hey, what's up, Mike? It's Steve. It's Steve Masillo. Oh, hey, Steve. Hectic. Hey, how you doing? A hip hop artist. How you doing today? Hey, this phone is being a little crazy right now. I'm going to call you right back on my cell phone. Is that okay? No, you know what? Hang out. It sounds good right now. It so sounds let's awesome. Get it in. What, what's, get it if in. If we can't get it in, we'll call back later. But let's do it now. <clears throat> All right. It's just, uh, hold on. I'm, he- I'm hearing myself echo like in- like crazy. So it's, uh, Distracted. That's just the Come NSA's on. PRISM program. You don't need to worry about that. We're actually going to talk about it, that a little bit in the second hour. Um, new revelations about how the NSA has uh, a, f- a direct line to what it is that you're doing on your computer. You know, and, that, <laughs> and I mean you, your computer, yeah. everyone's computer, every single human being in the United States who has a computer, who's using it. The NSA it has the ability to real-time monitor what's up on your screen. It's called a Share Everything Plan by AT&T. Uh, That's Verizon. right. Uh, welcome but, uh, to America. Hectic, why are you yep. calling in today? Why are you calling in? What's going on? Um, okay, so I don't hear the echo anymore. So, yeah, man, I just, uh, you know, I've been following... Um, all the stuff that you guys have been posting, and, um, you know, this issue just really hits home to me because, um, you know, I'm a local hip-hop artist, and um, it's just, you know, seeing, seeing a kid get arrested and held without bail for, you know, some lyrics that he posted, um, you know, it's just extremely, um, you know, it just, it just hits home for me. Um, has anybody seen the, the grand jury? I know the kid got released, but has anybody seen the grand jury minutes on this, you know, uh, with the actual indictment when they went to go indict the kid? Because, um, you know, it's, it, it seems like it, it's such a, um, you know, the, the, the timing of this whole thing was just, um, just answer that question for me real quick. Is, is there, I haven't, I haven't seen any, the minutes yet. I don't yeah. know of anyone who well, has. We are starting to get some info, inside information. Uh, from sources, and we're not even sure what we can talk about, what we shouldn't be talking about, because the charges haven't fully been dismissed. So that's one thing we're all mindful of, um, because you know we, we want to make sure that this does go away. There is another hearing. Uh, the next hearing is Thursday. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's a Thursday. It's June twenty seventh, whatever that day that is, in Lawrence. So hopefully that's a big celebration, and we're all there at the courthouse and celebrating outside of the courthouse after it's all said and done. And the Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it seems like the, you know, the, the official charge is one that's getting dropped, hopefully. Um, you know, I'll see if I can get the day off work to come <clears throat> make it there with you guys, and you know, I'd love to. Um, but, yeah, you know, the issue, I mean, it's just, it's a freedom of speech, freedom of speech issue. Um, you know, me, myself, I have more, I guess you could call, you know, threatening lyrics in some of my songs 
And, um, you know, even just being an artist, hearing about this kid, I literally have songs where I'm, I'm like, scared to release them at this yeah. point because uh, of, you know, I don't want SWAT team showing up at my front door because, uh -huh. you know, something I, I said was taken out of context. And, um, you know, so I think that's the real issue here. Um, you know, it definitely scared me when I heard the whole, that, that this, I was like, oh, wow, they can you know, arrest you for, for saying something now, <laughs> or, you know, uh, lyrics being taken out of context, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just calling in to, uh, show my support, and, um, yeah, you know, hopefully bring some light to the issue and, and make more people realize that, uh, you know, this is bigger than just, you know, one, uh, kid, you know, one artist be being taken away for something he said on a Facebook page, you know, this affects all of us. And, um, you know, we have rights in this country. We have freedom of speech. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's wrong that they can hold this kid for, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the amount of time that they did. Um, you know, I mean, he was released now, which is great. But, I mean, even, you know, spending 30 days in jail um, is, is not a pleasant thing. You know, I mean, that's going to ruin this kid's life forever. I mean, even though, you know, uh, he won't be convicted of anything, Anytime, you know, you go to apply for a job, if they run a background check on you, um, you know, they can see if you've been arrested ever. Even if you have, even if everything's been no process um, and, you know, no convictions were made, I mean, they're going to see, oh, you know, oh, you were arrested for communicating a terrorist threat. So, yeah, um, it's true. It's, <clears throat> it's, 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 so, it's so true. Like, that, that stuff, there are laws in Massachusetts that do kind of protect you in some respects. Um, in, in terms of what the employers can get from the Corey databases now, which is great mm -hmm. if the if the employers follow the law, but there are private corporations that will illegally not follow the law and spy for employers and get that information. So, in any type of uh, felony arrest is on your record forever, basically. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And never mind if, if they were to just um, Google the kid's name at exactly, this point. Exactly. You know? Exactly. That's the point too. Yeah. Once it, you know, everybody knows now. So, I I, uh, I, I think he's probably going to sue. I don't know. I haven't talked to him, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. And I'd say he has good reason to. So. Yeah, no, and that's yeah. something that he's going to definitely do. I mean, they're definitely going to sue the city. I mean, he was deprived of his liberty. You know, um, clearly that's the clear clear hat was a total violation of his rights. He was a political prisoner for over a month, you know, and hey, shit, I mean, it's going to be incredible to watch the backpedaling that the prosecution, you know, in the state itself is going to have to do in the town of Methuen. Um, but what do you think about, uh, I don't know if you read the uh, the Herald article, but the the police chief, uh, Solomon, there uh, was was adamant about the fact that, like, the, poli the, the courts had made the wrong decision and that he stood by his decision to arrest the, the kid, you know, I mean, how, how, what, do you, what do you feel about that? Like, what do you, what do you think should like happen, or how do you think we should, as activists, as artists, like how should we react to police chiefs like this dude Solomon, who thinks like people should be put in jail for their words? Um, you know, it, it it seems to me like it's just the guy just doesn't want to admit that he was wrong. Um, I, you know, I I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe he 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 might, he might really you know see the injustice of what he was doing, but. Um, I, I think, you know, the people coming together and, you know, just, like, doing what you guys are doing right now, you know, talking about it on your radio show. Um, <clears throat> I, I forget the name of the kid, but I was just watching the video that you had um, shared with me, Mike, and, you know, they had a petition. There was, like, 90,000 people, <clears throat> you know, um, showing their support for this. So um, I think the more kind of public outcry that, that and, and more, you know, public support that we um, you know, show for the issue. I mean, yeah, an apology would be nice. You know, it, it would be it would be great for this police chief to say, you know, yeah, you know what, um, <clears throat> the timing of the whole thing was bad. You know, with the with the marathon bombing, and you know, we, everybody was just overly sensitive, and you know, we, we, we want to just apologize to the and, family. Yeah, and we're sorry. <clears throat> um, yeah, we're sorry to this kid and his family. How hard is that? Like, I'd still sue the sh sh sue the shit out of him, even if they did apologize. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> at least, at least uh, he could. Show some professionalism. Like, yeah. if, if I'm a journalist and I get a story wrong and I call this guy a terrorist and it turns out the, the facts prove that he's not a terrorist and then I went to print, I, I, I'm almost required and, and expected to apologize and retract the statements that I'm shown that are later false. And there's no, yeah. there's nothing like, like the, I, I have more professionalism than a police chief. 
who's supposed to protect and serve us? I, I don't get how that can work. How they, how we allow that to happen over and over again on these cases? Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, the kid was being held in I think it was uh, Essex County, so that's Middleton Jail, yeah. right? Yep. Um, that's that's not a nice. That's like you know that jail has one of the reputations of being like a bad tough place jail. to be. You know, there's yeah. like gangs and all that. There is. Um, it's, a, it's a really <laughs> tough jail. I mean. For minute, for the low security is it's a tough jail. I've had many friends stay there, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, That's and um, you know, like I said, I mean, no, no amount of money that this kid, you know, sues the police department for is gonna, you know, make up for the, um, you know, just just what he's probably encountered in the, in the you know, uh, month or so that he was there, um, for nothing. You know, I mean, the the kid lost out on time in school. Um, and, you know, never mind the reputation that he has. I mean, I remember you guys were saying that there was, you know, like moms or some mom who was, like, all proud that her kid beat up Kanye B in the past or something. Yeah, and, and, his kid, and the kid got arrested. Know. And the kid got arrested. Yeah. 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 So who, and, um, who knows the real backstory there when, when a mom's proud to post about on her Facebook that she was proud of her son. Maybe they should arrest her. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. If you're going to arrest I mean, somebody, like, who's more offensive? I find the mother... That posted that more offensive, much more offensive than anything right? the 18-year-old Cammy D did. Yep. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, one of the, uh, you know, the big picture, I, I think, is the fact that, um, I, I, I forget his name, but, but somebody was talking about how, you know, on the arraignment court date, there was, like, Fox News, you know, NBC, ABC, like, all the major news corporations were there, you know, reporting that, oh, look, this kid got arrested for saying something on his Facebook page. But, you know, once the kid gets released and, you know, a grand, uh, the, it's brought, the prosecutor, you know, brings the case to, to a grand jury and, and he sits there, you know, for whatever amount of time and, and, and tries to, you know, explain why th- there's, you know, reason to believe that he needs to be indicted for communi- uh, communicating a uh, terrorist threat. And the grand jury, you know, is just like, no, um, yeah, you know, that's not on every news corporation. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, nobody sees that. You know, they yeah. just see the kid in handcuffs Yeah, and they're in, not, they're, in, in a courtroom. And they're not reporting on the, the, you know, how many thousands of people that signed the petition to get him out of jail, the large mm-hmm. amount of people that came out to the court that day, the well, organizations, yeah. the video that King, the King of Pa did. They don't report on any of that. They don't report on any of his support he's gotten since we actually dug into this and found out what actually happened. And the kid is innocent. And now it's been proven by this grand jury, as far as I'm concerned. He is innocent. Cam E.D., we are so glad that you're home. And I want to thank you for calling in, Hectic. Stephen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate it. We actually, before, are you still there before we let you go? Uh, I'm here, yep. I'm here. You, you've uh, performed at the Freedom Rally in the past a bunch of times and done a lot for uh, various causes. Where can people find what you're doing right now in your music? <clears throat> Okay, um, so I, I just started recording a new album. Um, you can go to my YouTube page, it's Hectic HQ. Um, so it's H E K T I K H Q. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Hectic underscore music. So it's H E K T I K underscore music. And I'll, you know, I'll keep people updated on my, um, you know, my newest stuff. And you know, Mike, I'll send you some, some new material as well. Definitely hit me up on Twitter too, because I'll tag you up into everything we're doing. Thank you for cool, coming man. in. Absolutely, thank you, man. Yeah, th- th- Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it, guys. Absolutely. That was a good call. That was a good call. You know, it's it's like a lot of people out there, you know, especially, you know, other artists, you know, they step up and they understand, like, what it is to, to, like, be put in that position to, like, be like, I mean, you know, when, like, you're expressing yourself and then that expression is, is threatened by, you know, the state and you can't, you know, say what you want to say because now you're going to get indicted. Are you going to get brought up on some crazy charges or something like that? You know, like, I mean, it's 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 insane. It's insane, and it's good to see that you know that's it's awesome to know that like so many people care and they and they want to step up and they want to do something about it and they want to like you know lend their support. You know, and like that's something that when we when we went to court, you know, I was one of the folks who went there to the courthouse or whatever, and and uh, we we filled up half the courtroom. You know, um, there was there was. It was a small courtroom, um, and to begin with, and we filled up almost the whole entire courtroom. But then, uh, when we moved into the larger one, we still filled up half of it, you know. And uh, there was just a lot of folks there that were in support of the First Amendment, 
Yeah, and you could see it too in that video. Check that video out if you haven't seen it. What's it called again? We've got two it's, different. Uh, names, it's it's called uh, Free Cam Free Speech. Yeah, and uh, you can find that at koptproductions.com, dot com, um, and also all over Facebook if you and, on my, YouTube, and on YouTube. YouTube as well. dot com slash Mike Can. That's we'll right, there too. So either place you'll find it. It's recently uploaded, and it's uh, we played some of it earlier. You just heard us open the show with some of it with Frank Capone and Rich Fu was in it. The King of Pot was, as I've been saying for a little while, my brother, he is stronger than ever. This video, the last couple of videos he's put out on, on the medical marijuana issue and now this video, it really shows where he's going. There's a lot more coming. we got a big dig feature on the King of Pot this week coming out, digboston.com. Um, so much going on, but we're going to be all, hopefully, taking everybody's calls on Cammy D today, 617-206-1050. I'll call it... Uh, Cammy Diathon today. Cammy Diathon. He is free. We did it. He is. We did it this week. That's a, right. You know, just amazing. Watch that video. You can see it. It's uh, yeah, no, and, and there was a there was a complete and total, like real, really, it was really powerful. You know, um, to be one of the people in the courtroom and to be there to support his family, uh, and they were really grateful that we were there. You know, um, it, I met his dad and I met his sister, and and they're good people. You know, they're regular people. And it's 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 awesome to be part of that, and it's awesome to stand up for what's right, you know, and kind of just remind those people uh, who are in the uh, you know the court system and all that because it's it's such a it's such bullshit because like you're not allowed to go in there with your cell phone, right? And then every asshole on the other side of the like the bar or whatever, you know, has their cell phone out and they're playing with it, and it's like it's just that little thing just shows the hypocrisy of the whole entire system, you know what I mean? Of of how like it's it's they're on, in an upper class these prosecutors and these these people that are that are working for this judicial system are are, are somehow an upper class where they're allowed to be treated differently Ar- aristocrats right exactly exactly and, and, and you know to, to sit there I think Rich Fu summed it up really good when he said he has two young women prosecutors of a higher a higher class letting someone who raped a woman. Uh, yeah, uh, what yeah, was it? A woman, a fifteen-year-old girl. He beat and uh, raped a fifteen-year-old, and they let him out on two thousand dollars bail. Let him out on two thousand dollars bail. Now you get this little kid that comes up that I'm not afraid of at all. I want to take him under my wing, wing and you know, give him a noogie. Little, yeah, he'll be my little best buddy here. Well, <laughs> well I'll, I'll hook him up with all my hip hop friends, and he'll be creative and, and do good things and get in a, in, a, in a more positive environment, which I think we all need. And they're going to put him in jail with no bail. He doesn't hurt anybody. No one. No, no one did nothing to anybody. Nobody. You know, not a single person. So give us a call here, 617-206-1050. That's 617-1050. I'm sorry, 206-1050. <laughs> Good Lord. It's been a long day over here, you know. But uh, you want to uh, play some music here and then uh, come on back? Yeah, we'll come back with some more callers, hopefully. Doing our Cammy D a thong. We're going to listen to some more Cammy D. Here it comes. Here we go. <laughs> this is Cam. You know what it is, it's that killer Kennedy Now my name is not no whiz Just kidding, actually yeah, I am Smoking on the reefer Every single day, trying to find a way When I'm bored, I say yo, why don't I just go and blaze Cause I'm trying to get that paper Making money every day You already know that's what I say you already know when I'm sitting here with you I don't know what I'm doing Cause I'm living in the feeling Every day with a lot of time And I'm always screwing up my life Doing stuff that is not really good But you know it's kinda hard When you grew up in the hood And there's nothing else That will destroy you any day Yeah Bossing on you You already know that this kid is flossing on you Lightweight Call me whatever I knock you out faster than Mayweather uh-huh, you know what it is This that kid, Kenny D I don't really care what you say about me Cause I'll destroy you any day You already know that I'm straight No, I am not gay I'm the man, killer can And you already know, damn Rosie O is my last name If you got a problem, damn Come and tell me, I'll go ham on your face I don't care I got jumped before, had some kid over there Acting up, cause his girl wanted me and not him I was like, yo, man, why don't we just be friends So he came up and snuffed me cause he was a little cheap shot of bitch You already know that I went to the hospital and didn't have an itch I don't care what the hell just happened Cause you know that I'm always rapping And this girl, who I was tapping, got mad and us after, you know I don't care, 
what you gotta say Cause this killer kid will destroy you any day Yeah, chomping on you haters like an alligator You already know I said goodbye, yeah, I'll see you later Cause I don't care what you gotta say I will wreck any of you, any single day, any given day of the new year, you already know Look into my eyes, see here That I'm so clear When my head is so clear <laughs> That's Cammy D He actually gets pretty good in that I think Cammy D could be really good I think he's got some He talent. gets a decent flow at the end there uh, This is Two Hotheads Where activism happens And uh, we're talking to Cammy D today Who does uh, have he, a lot of haters he's, He does have he's a lot of a haters lot, There's a lot of people that don't like his flow And his style, we know, but I think he could be really good. He, I think that rhymed. I like, I like it. your flow. He, yeah. Right. So we got a, we got another call here on our uh, day of Cammy D. Uh, who do we got on the phone here, caller? Hey, what's going on, man? This is Chance from Revolution is Evolution Porn Record. Hey, Chance, what's going on? How are you? Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Not much. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for calling in. Uh, so, Chance, mm-hmm. you, you were down at the uh, at the event uh, when uh, at the reasonable cause uh, or reason <laughs> reasonable cause. <laughs> yeah, reasonable cause, right? <laughs> <laughs> the you mean, you mean like that circus at the Lawrence Court? Just yeah, the, the circus, there. yeah, where well, people had the pointy hats on and stuff. Yeah, so the, that was yeah. the uh, the reasonable doubt hearing. Uh, probable cause. Hey, all right. That's the KMD. The KMD court hearing. Yeah, the KMD. Camb- yeah, let's just call it that, right? So uh, yeah, we'll call it that. Yeah. So and uh, so, what did you call it to talk about? How did you feel about all that? You know, tell us, tell us your feelings and all. Um. Well, my, my feelings on it. I, what they did to to KMD is horrible. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. It was a fiasco. I, in my personal opinion, it was done to simply scare people who might be starting to talk out about things on Facebook. You know, I feel like they thought this kid was an easy target. No one, you know, would come and support him the way we did. And uh, my organization, Revolution is Evolution, put together the event page to try to get everyone there. We had a lot of help from other organizations as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but we all needed to be there because, you know, not to mention, he's, he's an 18-year-old kid. He doesn't deserve to be facing that. And it goes beyond this. This is our this is our first amendment. This is freedom of speech. You know, exactly. If they, exactly. if they take care, next they take me. If they take me, next they take you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we I, do. it's like I said in the song. I said if they let him, if we let him take him, then we let him take us. If we let him take us, then we all just fuck. You got two choices: stand up and make a fuss, or just keep your mouth shut and hit the back of the bus. Awesome. That's right. And you actually, uh, Chance, you were the you were the yeah. dude who actually did the song on yeah. our on our Cammy D free Cammy D video on uh, KOP Productions uh, dot com right now. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's my song. It's a nightmare. Yeah, no, and actually, after the whole event, we we all got up and in, uh, in the parking lot across the street, and you uh, you rocked a couple of your songs for us, and it was it, you know it was awesome, man. And it's just happy to see you involved and in, in, uh, you know coming out in uh, Revolution is Evolution, like making it happen over there. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're, we're still involved. I, I mean, I talked to Cam. You know, he, he he thanked us for his support. I told him we'll definitely be at his next court hearing. Make sure they let this poor kid out. I mean, he's already out, but to make sure it gets dismissed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, they don't try to sneak any more charges in there or anything like that. Yeah. Exactly. Two things. Uh, can, we, can we reach out to Cammy to try to get him up on this show whenever it's possible? I don't know if it's after the court hearing, but uh, we definitely want to have him up here, on here. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I talked to Cam. He's, he's actually fully on board to basically be the poster child for the First Amendment. Hey. And just hold, hold on. We're gonna, after his court date and his family's out of the spotlight, we're going at the Methuen Police Department. Awesome. So he, they, you know made, I mean? yeah, they made another activist. Good for them. Yeah, right? Yeah. You just get to multiply us, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One kiss yeah. at a time. And Cam is still on board with that. Um, I was talking to him, you know, and uh, being an MC myself, you know, I gave him a little advice, you know, just, you know, stay quiet till the 27th. Get, you know, get out of the get out of the woods. Yeah. You know, and then uh, I'm going to keep in touch with him. You know, his family, they're really great people. Awesome. Um, I've, I've talked to him, his dad, his sister. They're all great people. Um, none of them deserve to be going through this, you know. So uh, we're going to put the benefit show together for him. Um, try to raise money for their legal funding because, you know, I mean, he's family, they're paying for it on their own. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to try to raise some money. We're going to put a benefit show together out here in Lowell, Mass. Um, Right now, I'm shooting for Saturday the 6th, so it will be after the next hearing. Yep. Yeah. Um, but if we can't get the 6th, we definitely have the following Thursday. I just need to go down to the club tonight and lock down which day we definitely have. But we, the 6th looks good. 
Where can people find out information about you and that event coming up? Um, I mean, on my Facebook, on Revolution is Evolution Facebook page, our Twitter page. Um, the link to our Revolution is Evolution is facebook.com slash resist the NWO. Awesome. There you go. That's a good one. I, I'm on that one, actually. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm liking that on Facebook, you know, and you should, too, because, yeah. uh, you know, Chance is one of the dudes who was doing it here in Massachusetts and yeah. making things happen and standing up for your rights. Yeah, I mean, you got to, so, you know, you can't just sit back and be a Facebook activist. You know what I mean? You, oh, you yeah. got to get up. You got to let people know that we're not having this. And if you try it again, we will be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we're all going out on June 27th. That's I think right. It's going to be a party in the in the in the parking lot after the courthouse yeah. hearing. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was and it is going to be again. You know, I mean, we're definitely uh, going to be there. You know, in mass. I mean, last time, chance you were there, man. I mean, we filled that courtroom, right? I mean, we had like half that courtroom chock full. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And we could have even more people there. I've, I've had people contact me saying, "How can they help now?" You know. That's right. So, I mean, it hits home for a lot of people. And, 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 you know, a lot of people are asleep on their feet right now. And I think this woke up a, a few good people. No doubt, man. Yeah. No doubt. Well, hey, we got another call coming yeah. in. We thank we, you so much for yeah, calling, man. And we want to thank you because since Absolutely. You, you called in and got us going here, we, uh, we got t- tons of calls. People are reacting. So this is uh, that was, uh, Chance from uh, Revolution is Evolution. And uh, you can find them on Facebook, Twitter. And uh, who we got on the phone right now here? We lose them. Oh, hello, hello, two hotheads. Hello, Mr. Mike, Ken, and Frank Capone. Is that the KOP? That of is the king of hot. Woo! We were playing your video. How are you guys doing? I'm reporting live here at the Gay Pride Parade because i got to represent those people because I feel they're a lot like the marijuana movement. Someday yeah, but, they won't make fun of us anymore. Someday we'll be able to march this strong in the streets. Oh, yeah, we're all Boston Pride today. That's we're, right, that's the right. Dick was in it, uh, on regular yep. radio, Jackie yep. Soriano. There yep. were three strange every, women. Our producer here was down there. Just about everyone we know yep. was down there. We got uh, the Pirates have a, have a, um, have a, a what do they got? A float? A float. A flute. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And, uh, was the proper response. Do I have apology on the end? There will be a part two to that video with the, all the interviews will be shown. I promise that to everybody. We didn't leave anybody out. We didn't mean to leave anybody out, but we wanted to get out that video as soon as we could. Yeah. And uh, make sure that Mike uh, got that, that distributed on his network because uh, we know how he reaches the people, and I wanted to make sure people knew what was going on because it affects us all absolutely and uh i haven't listened to the show because i'm down here but i'm I'm sure you guys have been talking about it so uh i you know bringing awareness and you guys are the first to do it we've had a lot of calls on this on on, and people who have seen the video i mean people are really reacting to that video you did king of pot number one really really michael yeah (laughs) amazing (laughs) amazing work (laughs) but in all the speeches i mean Everybody on that, Frank, you did you did a great freaking job. Oh, oh come God. on, yeah, Garrett, everybody, uh, Rich Fu, um, uh, Evan yes. Green, I, yeah. I mean, everyone was, I mean, did a great job. I mean, KOP, you did a great job too, man. And it was it so awesome of you to come out, you know. And I mean, I knew you'd be there, you know, because you stand up for the First Amendment, you stand up for what's right, you know. And uh, you whether, bet. whether it's marijuana you or bet. the First Amendment, you know, you know, you're always going to be there and make it happen. Of course, whenever I'm needed, just call. You know, like when you put the the bat light up at the sky, just put the pot leaf in the sky with my face, and I'll be there, you know? Well, I think we got, we got another one for you. I, I don't know if you saw that. N.A. Poe, he's still facing charges for his arrest in Philadelphia. Federal charges, looking at a lot of years. I'm just finding out about this, yeah. yeah. It was in Dig Boston two weeks ago. I want you to, uh, if you can, be at his next hearing, cover it, just like you covered this event, because we, we need to win. We, we can win this way by... You know, working together and, yeah, and showing the numbers like we did. Yeah. You know, um, at the last court date. You know, we came out and, and we moved in mass, right? I mean, yeah. how 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 awesome did that feel, KOP? When like after the, the 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 case was heard or whatever, you know, when the family stood up to walk out of the courtroom, and how great did oh, you yeah. feel like being there in support and standing up as well? You know, when you had twenty plus good. people, you know, go walk out of that courtroom, and yeah. so they could see like you know what, you're not just messing with one dude because these twenty people multiply. You know, those are just the people that can make it there that day, right? Yeah. Right. You said it all, man. I can't say it any better than that. That's right. And, you know, I, I, I think anybody would want the support like we gave to Cam if it happened to them. 
And the thing is, in this post-9-11 age, everybody's so afraid. And I'm getting emails, everybody, from concerned people within the marijuana community that I did this video, and if I was, like, kind of nervous or scared, and I said, for what? I mean, we're reporting the news the way it was happening, and everybody that came on camera spoke from their very heart and soul of what our forefathers put on this earth for us to go by, our Constitution. That's yeah, right. Our First right. Amendment. That's uh -huh. right. What the hell? Yeah. Right. What the hell? So, Thank you guys for, you know, getting me involved, Mike. You know, get me involved and know what was going on. I'm glad that my production company was able to go out there and help uh, cover this and do what we did. And uh, I'm glad it's getting viewed by everybody. And share it with everybody because it can happen to you. That's right. That's right. And you're going to be back out there on the 27th again, right, to show the support? Oh, I'll be there, uh, cameras and all. And I think this time they'll know what's coming. So I wonder <laughs> if it will be uh, altercation like what happened in the first video. Uh, I believe uh, my wife, Valerie, found a video of somebody that covered the first hearing and uh, was being hassled by the police for filming. So, well, we actually had the know. police come over and ask us what we were doing, actually, while the... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then when they knew we weren't protesting, they went away. But the big pissed because the bailiff wanted something done. Yeah, yeah, no, the bailiff was pissed. So we'll bring multiple yeah. cameras. Multiple, yeah, no, multiple absolutely. Multiple yeah. cameras, everyone's got to have a camera. Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. So we'll see. I'll have my press pass that day just in case. So uh, we'll, we'll be set. So I have a license. Uh, so we'll, so if they, if they say anything, all they can tell is move like 50 feet or whatever from uh, wherever we're filming in front of. Amazing. Uh, King of Pond, I can't yeah. thank you enough. And uh, I just, uh, what you know that. No, thank uh, you. you. Thank you for putting it up there, Mike, for me, because I know the reach you got with all your network of people and that. And I don't do the the political end of it so much, but that was something that, that really frosted my balls in plain English, and uh, I needed to do something <laughs> and help support it and get it out there for you, and I'm glad you were able to distribute it, so thank you. Awesome, and you have this feature coming out. You've seen it coming out hopefully next week in Dig Boston. What do you have to say about Oh, my about God, that? you, you saw told it. me about it. Yeah, I've been telling some people, hey, you, you're going you're gonna to put me in print, Mike. Yeah, I'm really honored about and humbled about that, dude. It's going to be incredible. i got to get those issues. You know, I'm not working in Boston anymore, so make sure I get a couple issues, and thank you so much. I'm going to grab a stack. This is, uh, I think it's a touching, I, I, I really like writing this one, so. Awesome. Yes, it's going to get framed in my, uh, in my studio, Mike. You're going to sign it, and uh, everybody uh, in your, on your radio show is going to sign it. We're going to put it up on the uh, studio wall. You do Along with my knife activist award that you gave me this year yeah yeah you deserve it absolutely thank you thank you so much guys thank you for putting up with the 25 hours of me trying to get that up computer <laughs> problems and uh i'm going to be dumping drive this weekend so we'll you be uh, having a better better luck next time you did it dude congratulations yeah, and thank absolutely. you okay thank you that was the king of pot Keep huge check. video yeah huh? awesome video you know wicked cool video you know and uh, made to look, made, you know, made made out to look my, you know, my stuttering ass to, uh, like I actually knew what I was talking about. You did. And, uh, you do know what you're talking about. <laughs> and it's just um, you're not used to having someone of that caliber doing the film. Present that's, it. That's right. You know, that's I mean, right. King, King of Pot, I've been saying this, he's taking it to another level now. Going full time. And the next issue of the dig, you're going to find out all about it. And how, Frank, we're going to be, this is just the beginning. There's a bunch of people now, if you can see it from this show. We're starting to work together, and we're starting to get a little bit of smarter in the way we do things. And we're not needing to go work for some big corporation to do it. We don't have to go work for Fox 25 to have an effect. That's we right. We don't have to go work for the Democratic Party. We no. can do it independently. Or the Republicans. Yeah, and that's what we're doing. And uh, we have full editorial control on all of our content and the words we say. Unregular Radio really has supported us for a long time now. Dick Boston is now supporting us. The King of Pots supported me for a long time. It's it's just good to see what we're doing as a community, and with even with through this show, very exciting time. That's right, making things happen. And uh, you know, Garrett, I know you've been calling in. Uh, we got the lines open right now. We're gonna take a quick break and uh, get Garrett on the phone here. And um, yeah, we're the two hotheads. Where activism yeah. happens. And if you want to weigh in too, before uh, we hit the break, you can call in six one seven two zero six ten fifty, and we'll be back with you maybe. Ooh. Boston's best online radio. On regular radio. Back live. Two hotheads. On regular radio. Where activism happens.
Yes. That's right. Today we're taking calls uh, about Cammy D. We've been talking about Cammy D here for a couple weeks now, and uh, he's actually been released this week. And um, so you can call in 617-206-1050. That's uh, 617-206-1050. And uh, right now we have uh, somebody on the phone who was, uh, you know, responsible for um, bringing out all those people there um, at Cammy's last court date. Uh, Gary Kirkland, what's going on, brother? Hey, what's going on, guys? Right. Week. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's been an awesome week, right? Good ending. It's 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 been one hell of a roller coaster from Monday to Thursday. I'll tell you. It sure has. It sure has. So, uh, you know, what's um, tell us tell us about what's going on. Um, you know, your your uh, input on what happened, you know, on Monday, and uh, where we go from here. Yeah. So you know, on after Monday, I more or less expected that we'd be doing an update just for Monday, and not uh, have. This Thursday to cover too. So on Monday, we um, about twenty, we had about twenty or, or more bodies came down to the courthouse in Lawrence District, um, you know, to show solidarity with Cammy, who's being dragged, who was, still is technically being dragged through the court system um, over his freedom of speech. Um, at that point, he was in custody for a month, and we were able to support him and his right to speak freely, and everybody's right to speak freely um, is what it really boils down to. Um, you know, so there was, there was, we were there for the first hearing, and uh, they called up the, the prosecutor, and, and they're not ready. Uh, the actual prosecutor wasn't even there um, yet. They had some crap about um, they haven't got their grand jury hearing yet or whatever. And so the judge says, you know, come back after, after the next call and, um, you know, have a firm grand jury date for me at the very least. So, you know, we get jerked off to the second call, and... Um, when we come back, and so this is now, mind you, this this court system, as as everybody who's there witnessed, um, is overloaded. Like this judge even plainly said to everybody there for every case that was being heard, "Hey, I've got way too much work. I'm covering two courtrooms. The other guy's not here, and um, I haven't looked at any of your stuff. So what's going on?" Um, so I mean, just take a side here and say, like, our court systems are way overburdened as it is. Uh, forget about going out for rap lyrics. Um, so, yeah, so we come back on the second call, and this prosecutor gets up there with a, the actual prosecutor there with some bullshit about uh, the state police still have the computer, and so they're waiting on that to come back and don't have a grand jury date. And somehow the judge is like, yeah, cool, all right, well, we'll just put this off for another month. We'll come back in a month, June 27th, for another probable cause hearing, around two of this crap. Uh, so, you know, we left that day, you know, we know that our presence there, and, and we even saw looks in their eyes when, when we were there, and they saw us all, you know, get up and leave after Cammy's hearing, um, and they all saw that we were there just for that. Um, they know that the community is taking this seriously, and, and, you know, maybe a little late to get there, but this is not. But, yeah, so, you know, that was Monday. It, we seemed like, you know, we were going to be back in a month, and I'd have enough I just talking about the court and how, you know, poor Cammy would still be stuck, but come Thursday... Grand jury declined to indict. No indictment for Cammy D. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Justice prevails. Yep, yep. Well, justice hasn't prevailed yet. Um, so that with the grand jury's failure to indict, um, essentially the prosecution has collapsed on itself. Um, they have nothing left, um, really. So they've even announced in the Herald that they're not going to be uh, pursuing this any further, come the next hearing, um, you know, everything has to be formalized to the court, so this is still an active case, um, you know, until the 27th. Uh, but it's exciting news on all fronts, you know, we're, we're pulling candy through this, and, and we really, we really drove it home, and I have to say, and, you know, the, the, the show of, of bodies coming to that court and showing the Commonwealth that, you know what, and the prosecutor, and, and especially the bench, um, that, hey, this is, you no, know, we're taking it seriously. This crap is, is 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 bullshit. And it was interesting too. Didn't you think it was interesting that the uh, the judge that was uh, presiding that day clearly stated at the beginning of the trial, the well, not the trial, but the beginning of the uh, probable cause hearing, he really that he had no idea, like he had no idea about the case, and like and 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 then like he was like you know totally overloaded, and so it's it's. Doesn't that illustrate just like the kind of this disjointed thing where you know you you get in trouble with something and all of a sudden you're just thrown into this situation or this system where I mean it's so completely disjointed that it's just kind of this reactionary like 
crazy like octopus that's just you know like deciding what it wants to do when it wants to do it and there's no rhyme or reason to it where like in like with like look at with what happened with the judge right the same judge that decided that he was a dangerous person right isn't that the same judge that issued his release yes yeah it, um so when they had the, the dangerous the 58a hearing um to determine that cammy was a danger to society or whatever crap um it's the same judge that when the grand jury, uh, you know, declined to hand down an indictment, he ordered Cammy to go home that night, um, you know, on his own recognizance. Now, that's no bail, that's no supervision, he's released on his own recognizance. Um, you know, all signs point to this thing is over, yeah. and of course, the fat lady hasn't sung yet, but Cammy D looks like he's free. Yeah, and I think that uh, your presence there somehow, some way had, a, had an effect, and I think that the, the media... The video that Ki- the King of Pot just put out, it just makes it so clear to so many people, and especially when you have the news of what just happened with a with that he's being released, it makes it so clear for so many people who weren't sure about what was actually happening here, and people finding out about it for the first time. I- I- I'm excited that uh, that we got him free like this. This is this is very very exciting that he's home. He is home right now. He might be listening to us today. He very well might. And uh, you talked to him, right? Garrett, so what did he have to say? Like, how was he feeling? What was his head at? Oh man, like the, the he's so happy to be out. You know, he's he, like the support he got that day when we were there. Like that, really, like he couldn't believe. He just he really couldn't believe that. Like when he when, when we all got up and walked out, and like cause it was hard for him to see over to us. Yeah. Uh, but when all, when we all got up and walked out after his hearing, you know, after his thing was called, I mean, he saw he, he did see some of us going, and he saw that you know we were there for him, and then you know he was informed later by his, you know, his, his defender and, um, that, you know, we were there for him. He was just, he was just floored. Like, this whole thing just floored him. Um, he never, like, he was telling me, um, you know, um, I can only tell you a little bit, obviously, a personal yeah. conversation. Yes. Obviously. Yes. Uh, but he was just, just floored, dude, floored. All the support, everything. He so much appreciated. He never, never expected. He's, he did tell me, you know, he was, he was down and he thought that, you know, they kicked me even further down. He thought that was done, basically. Yeah, and that that's so important too to send the message: you are not alone. Because everything that the court system tries to do to you is take you of all your support, all your humanity, and to see people actually there for you. There's nothing more humane about that. You like, you know, just a human connection to people that you you sacrifice a day at work, you sacrifice family time, you sacrifice fun vacation time, money to be there for somebody who's facing this right now. I mean, how, I mean, I can't even imagine how it would, like, how it would feel like, you know, you're just trying to vent and, and, and express yourself, and, and all of a sudden you find yourself in the clink yeah. facing terrorism charges, like, damn, man. Yeah, and he really did. I, 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 gotta, I really got to throw a, a quick shout out here to, to there's, some, there's some bad things going about. Like, people are still trying to spin this. Yep. Yes, they are. Check this. The very first, the very first paragraph of the Herald when he was released, the Thorn High School student who posted his own rap lyrics on Facebook, boasting he'd outdo the Boston Marathon bombings as a killer, was released from jail last night after a grand jury declined to indict him. As a That's killer, the, who's the uh, uh, who's the writer off from the Herald that wrote that? This says um, Orion by Orion Johnson. Come on, Johnson. Give yeah. me a fucking well, break. Your writing be, sucks, dude. Could be a way dick, better. Johnson. You can be way better. This article here is extremely, um, it's extremely read-worthy because it also gives you an insight into the, the minds of both the, the chief of police of Methuen and the prosecutor. Um, Kimball Monaghan was speaking for the prosecutors, and they, they just don't even care about it. They're just so cold-hearted. They're like, we've been the case. We call witnesses. It's a function of the grand jury to hear evidence. Like, they don't even care that they dragged this kid through this. It's just like cold, like, yep, that's the process. We put him through it. Okay. They're just actuaries, man. It's it's, it's like uh, those those uh, fat weird dudes in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know, did you fill out your paperwork properly? You know, like I, this? yeah, I almost expect it from uh, the prosecutors, but w- the reporter. It's like how much of a like where is your balance? Where is your bias? Like you totally in that article. You're right. It's a one sided conversation. You're a joke, Johnson. Joke, Johnson. Joke Johnson. <laughs> Joke Johnson from the Herald reporting. 
<laughs> hey, we got another call, Garrett. Um, we're going to jump off real quick. Thanks, brother, for coming on and uh, organizing that event um, last Monday. And uh, everyone's going to come out on the 27th uh, to the court hearing at the Lawrence Courthouse. And uh, check out the Facebook. But we're going to bring this other caller on. And uh, thanks, brother. Two hotheads where activism happens. Hello, caller. Who's calling? Do we lose the caller? Well, he hung up. Oh, he hung up, right? Call him back. Up. Call us back. Call him, call him back. 617-206-1050. 617-206-1050. We have two hot heads. Or oh, yeah. 1050. Yeah. Or 1050 for uh, um, uh, whoever. that uh, I forgot her name. Um, yes. Jackie. Jackie. Motherfucker. Hello. Caller. Hello, caller. Hello, caller who keeps calling us and not talking. 617 Prank caller. Prank caller. Hello. Hi, is this is this Frank Rizzo? Uh, just a sec. This is Mathis Erickson calling in. Oh, wow, you're calling from like China or somewhere, aren't you? Yeah, I'm out in China right now. International caller, what are you calling about today? Tell us, Matt. I'm calling about Cammy D, man. Calling about Cammy D. I'm happy to hear that uh, he's freed as of right now. What? what uh, why? Do, why are you happy that he's free? Well, I mean, the the entire situation was bullshit. I mean, a guy that's really just using his freedom of speech and expression gets quinked for absolutely no reason. Um, the thing that actually got me the most heated was reading the news reports that initially came out when he was arrested, um, pretty much saying that the kid was guilty before they had even looked at what he had actually written. I know. I know. And where were they when... We show, you know, that the people showed up at the court hearing. It, it, yeah, exactly. Uh, no reporting on that. The, the uh, reporters that actually were speaking about him should have uh, at least, you know, corrected the articles because if you read his actual lyrics, you could tell that he clearly, clearly was not talking about actually committing any terroristic threat of any kind. That's what I saw. I clearly saw it too. Yeah, no, absolutely. It was it was perfectly clear it, that he wasn't, you know, issuing any ter- terrorist threats. That he was just trying to be, you know, a rapper and express himself in a way that he thought was rapping. I mean, you know, it is it, it clearly, you know, nonsense and bullshit. And like now, you have this this prosecution that is is gonna, you know, they say, oh well, we're probably gonna di- dismiss the case. We don't plan on bringing any lesser charges upon him. But like. Do you think that they, they learn from that, or do you think they care? Like, how do you feel about, like, the prosecutors and, and, and what their role in this was? Like, how, how do they justify that to you? Well, I mean, it's obviously very hard to respect a prosecutor for going after... I mean, this is still a kid, too. I mean, yeah, he's 18, he's considered an adult, but, I mean, the, it's absolutely ridiculous. The kid should be able to, you know at least show how he's feeling about things. He has his freedom of expression, and then these guys are going to come down on him and send a message to not just this kid, but all kids, like, oh, yeah, if you want to express yourself, don't do it in a way that offends other people, because that's pretty much all it was. Maybe some people didn't like how he expressed himself, but ultimately that doesn't matter. Yeah, and you're, you're a local uh, a local man, aren't you? Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Millbury area, Millbury, Massachusetts, right outside of Worcester. And I actually went to Suffolk University in Boston, so I, you know, I'm local, born and raised. Fancy man, going to Suffolk. Yeah, and what do you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fancy school. <laughs> so uh, what are you doing in China right now? Uh, I'm actually teaching out here. Wow. So we got a teacher that supports Cammy D? Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> International, that's awesome, man. Thanks that's for awesome. calling yeah, for uh, thanks. China. Cammy D's going to like this call. We got another caller. Thank yeah. you, Mathis. Right. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Call in again if you want. 617-206-1050. Hello, caller. Call on the line. Hello. Hello, caller. Hello. Hello. Who's calling? Uh, yeah, this is Petey. I, um, hey. I talked to Mike yesterday. He told me to give a call into the show. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Chilling, chilling, chilling. Thanks for calling in. Uh, no problem. So lay it on us, man. <laughs> I was just calling about that kid that got locked up in Methuen. That uh, little, you know, uh... Cammy D. Yes. On uh, Facebook. Yep. What do you think and about I, it? I, huh? What do you think about this whole thing? I just think it's insane, man, because... I mean, just... I mean, 
just like the simple fact is that I said much worse things on Facebook. I said much worse things in public. I said much worse things in front of police officers. And you know what? I've never been arrested. And this kid, he didn't make a threat. He didn't do nothing wrong. I mean, there's rappers out there that say a lot of worse stuff out there, and, you know, nothing happens to them. But they decided to pick on this little kid for no reason. Yeah. And I just think it's the same. It's just wrong. It's it's it's. It's just totally taking away our rights, you know what I'm saying? Don't, I'm sorry right now, I'm actually out driving, so my phone's a little... But, uh, <laughs> you know, like, it's just like the freedom of speech. And it's just like, you know, slowly people are starting to see that it's getting taken away, you know? Yeah, I do. And and were you at this hearing the other day at Lawrence? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was there. I was there in support, and plus I'll be there June 27th as well to show my support again. Even though he's out, but I'll still be there. Yeah, to That's make sure right. those I'll be there charges. Too. Two hundred will be there. Yeah, to make sure those charges are dropped and uh, to celebrate. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, from what I heard, his father was talking about they wanted to cop a plea to a misdemeanor, and he shouldn't have to cop no plea whatsoever. It should just be dismissed. Damn so it. I'm really hoping that they don't they don't resort to that that plea. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too, is that is, that's just how that system works, though, right? Is they charge you with something that they know they can't get, and then they still hold it over your head, though, because, well, if you know, if you were found guilty of this, you could be facing 20 years in jail, right? And then so they get you to cop to a plea that's, oh, oh time served or whatever, you know, and, and but it's on your record forever, but they're going to win. You know, they get you on a misdemeanor, so they get another notch in their belt, right? And then exactly. you got to go trying to find a job. Exactly. It's a it's a straight scare tactic. I've been through it. I know people have been through it. And it works, to tell you the truth, it really does work. It does it does scare you into being like, you know what? I don't want to go to jail for this long. I don't want to get convicted and then you cop out and then your life is pretty much ruined because of your record. Yep. So That's I'm right. just hoping that doesn't happen with this kid. But uh, you know, his father seems pretty smart, you know, his sister's smart, you know, they know what they're doing, so I I really don't think that's going to happen, but I guess we just have to wait and see. Yeah, no, and they were good people, too. You know, I mean, I was um, I was really, you know, uh, su- not surprised, but I was happy to see that, like, he had a good, strong, like, support network there behind him of good people, you know, to um, to, to be there for him in his time of trouble, you know. Cause I, I was asking his dad, you know, about whether or not he was you know, going to see his, his son and, you know, and that sort of deal and everything else, and uh, he said that he could. You know, I figured because he was put into Middlesex that he was in, like, New Man or whatever, and he wasn't able to be uh, to, see, to be seen, but um, apparently they had been visiting him and everything else, and so he had been in good spirits and all that. And, I mean, I mean from, you know, somebody that's, you know, you, when, you get, like, when you get locked up, you want you to know that people on the outside there are with you and thinking about you, you know. And uh, so, you know, props to you for coming out and being one of those people and, you know, supporting Cammy and his family and uh, supporting the First Amendment, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, if, if you look at the kid, he's not a thug. He's not a criminal. He looks harmless. He couldn't even, you know, harm a fly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you just see a, you just see an innocent little kid in there, you know, he was being bullied in school, and, you know, yep. a lot of stuff was going on that people don't talk about. People don't tell you in the news because they just want to frame it in a certain way. I've read so many articles, it just made me disgusted. And it's, it's just like you can tell just by looking at the kid that he's not who they, who they paint him out to be. Absolutely. But yeah, I, I agree, good. Petey. It's, it's, it's just like you're saying, and uh, it's so good. It's good to see that so many people took action. I hope people continue to take action on... The twenty seventh. Yeah, on the, on the 27th. 27th. That's the day to take action. You yeah. know, we come out and we show, like we put the nail in the coffin, basically, so yeah. to speak. Right? We say, listen, yeah. all right, we're not going to stand for this. Right? We're not going to stand for the government coming in and trying to stifle people's First Amendment. We're not going to stand for that. We are the people, and we will show up here, right, at your courthouse, at your place of work, and we will let it be known that you know this is our house, and we're paying your salary. So go after somebody that makes sense. You know, go yeah. after a criminal. Yeah, don't go after somebody speaking. And they're, they're right, we need right? To, we need to continue to, to uh, as a community, locally, nationally, to continue to really protest all of these brothers and sisters who keep getting thrown in jail, black, white, brown, whatever color, race, because it, it's, it's, it's so easy sometimes to say when it's a young white kid and all of us are, you know, it's close by and we're, some of us are rappers, but we need to really take action on a lot of these cases because they're happening all over the place and we're seeing them 
and it's tough for all of us to keep up with it and, and our jobs and our families. But uh, that's what was so exciting about this to me is that we actually saw people take action and we saw immediate results. And it's exciting to get this kid out. Hey, we got, uh, we got another caller coming in here. Um, thank you very much, Petey, for calling in. And, uh, we're going to see you on the 27th. We want to thank you for your support. Uh, another shout-out to uh, Revolution is Evolution. And uh, you, you have yourself uh, going, brother. Thanks for calling in. We got another caller. Caller, what's up? Hey, what's up? Um, there was a super important thing about Cammy's um, situation that I didn't get to throw out there. Uh, his trial is still ongoing. We still need bodies for June 27th at 11 a.m. at Lawrence District Court. And moving beyond this, we still need to seek accountability for the Methuen police chief who's been behind all this. Yeah. Um, I didn't appreciate getting cut off, and thank you for letting me call back. Hey, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Did you cut him off, Frank, or was it me? Uh, we had another call coming oh, in. Right. We don't have two lines here, so we yeah. got to keep it moving when we the callers call in. You know what I mean? we got to make do with what we have. Trying to get as many people on the record today if we cut anyone else. Off, it's not. Uh, I feel like the KOP. Over, I feel like KOP over here. People are calling in and getting angry about us cutting yeah. them off. <laughs> hey, we've taken a lot of calls, and that's what the idea today. It's not just uh, you know the usual where we interview one person for a long time. We want to hear from a lot of people, so Cammy knows that there are a lot of people out there that care about him, that are listening to what we're doing today for him, about him, about this case. Because man, he sat a lot of time in jail, and he was all alone, and he's out now, and he needs to know. We're here, and we're still behind them, and we're not going to forget what That's they right. do. That's right, and you know, we're, we're, we're here to um, you know, help him along his path of uh, becoming, like, getting, I mean, because the dude was a political prisoner, right? He was. He was a political prisoner, 18 years old political prisoner in Massachusetts, like, crazy, crazy, and um, it's going to be really interesting to see how this is all going to pan out going forward, you know, with the Methuen police chief, with you know this the the policy of of sneak like searching someone's house and and taking their taking their 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 personal effects based off of speech yeah you know it's just all all sorts of and different they charged things. it when all the other agencies that we're here and said no yeah no yeah. the other agencies were like no no the fbi didn't charge him if yeah. it was really terrorism the fbi would have charged him that's the him. thing like the 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 federal government would love to jump on that yeah they would love they'd it they'd love it they'd love it yeah. they'd be like see this is why we have these laws because of these scary people yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. why I, I'm going to continue to demand this. I, 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 I challenge them right on their Facebook page, the Methuen Police Department. I said, if I'm held to a certain standard as a journalist to retract, to apologize when I'm wrong, why isn't a police chief and a police department that has government powers, that is supposed to be getting paid a whole lot more money, and they are being paid a whole lot more money for their, for their profession than I am as my journalism, why are they held to a different standard? And this police chief... Is not expected to respond and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong about Kennedy. No, he was brazen about it. He said he stands it. by his decision. He said he stands by his decision and that he thought that it was it was wrong of the court to release him and he claimed that several different functions of the court um, you know, had agreed and said that he was, you know, dangerous. Bullshit. One function. Bullshit. Okay? One like function you said, of the court. Frank, in the video. Like they they're fucking Chewbacca. That's the perfect thing. They are yeah. Chewbacca. Whatever that <laughs> means, we all know what it means. They are Chewbacca. <laughs> you can shout all you want, police chief. You are Chewbacca. We all know it's delusions a- of grandeur, man. Return of the Jedi when Chewbacca's talking to Han Solo in the cave in the cage at uh, uh, Jabba the Hutt's place, you know, and and he and Han Solo tells him he's having delusions of grandeur, you know. I'm not sure what he says, but that's why I said they were Chewbacca. Yeah. <laughs> that's the point. That's exactly it. <laughs> so, hey, give us a call here, 617-206-1050. I think we're going to take a break right now, uh, 617-206-1050. Because we're overheating with air Yeah, conditions. we are a little overheating. We are the two hotheads, and this is where activism happens. Boston's best online radio on regular radio. What's up, everybody? We're back. This is the two hot heads where activism happens on unregularradio.com. At any rate, we got a phone number over here. It's uh, 617-206-1050. And uh, today we are taking calls from our audience, uh, you know, to let p- us know what they think about a story that we've been covering for the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, we've got a couple uh, folks... We you know, called in. We got someone waiting on the line right now, uh, waiting for the uh, the stakes to pop up. Yeah, he's trying to call us at the same time. He's waiting for some some race to happen. He's Belmont waiting State. on some horses. He's got to talk to a man about a horse, and so we're gonna wait for that for our, our man who has to talk to a man about a horse. 
<laughs> and uh, until he's ready. But uh, we've had great people on the show today. We had uh, Chance from uh, Revolution is Evolution uh, call in today. We had PD from Revolution is Evolution call in today. We had uh, Garrett Kirkland, uh, revolutionary extraordinaire, hmm. uh, defend the fourth and the Fed. Uh, you know, Jill the bankers, uh, Jill the scientists. Free Cammy D. Free Cammy D. Um, great dude, great activist uh, here in Boston. We also had the King of Pot call in earlier. The King of Pot. K O P. Uh, you brother. can check him out over at K O P Productions dot com. And the King of Pot dot com. And the King of Pot dot com. Great dude, great activist, making things happen. Made a great video for this whole Cammy D thing, which you can check out at K- K O P Productions dot com. Yeah, and really reposting. Uh, re- Comment on that video. Exactly. Post Comment it. on it, send repost it, it, send it to people, tell the world, you know. And uh, that's something that we want to thank, you know, our, our listeners and our, and our uh, activist base, you know, for all the work that you do out there on the Facebook, spreading the word, spreading the message, and uh, really, you know, supporting us so we can go out there and, uh, you know, bring you these stories that are really important and really make sense and affect us in a way that is, uh, you know, pretty serious as activists, as people who want to go out there and, and make a difference in this world. And uh, so thank you for that. And sometimes the show and you listening, supporting out there, actually do have an effect. This is a case where I really do think that we had an effect, both on Cammy's D spirits, but as well as what happened in the real world. So... Awesome, awesome job, everybody. Also, Hectic called in today. Steve Masillo, uh, a Freedom Rally artist, multiple times performed at the Freedom Rally. Done a lot of uh, activism and, and past work. He called in a rapper, another rapper. We had a few rappers. To call yeah, in. yeah. Chance Dude. also is is is, uh, is rocking the beats as well. All supporting Free Cammy D and the fact that this this whole thing was a bunch of BS. That's right. That's right. And you know, I mean, even this. It's funny that. Um, this has uh, kind of taken on a life of its own right now, this whole situation, and Cammy has become the figure child, you know, or the poster child for the, for the First Amendment, and I'm glad that uh, by all reports he's willing to take on that role, you know, and uh, really stand up and, and, and not be afraid, you know, because, I mean, he saw the, the consequences of standing up, you know, he, he spent 30 days in jail, you know, and... And now he's got a lot of new friends. Yeah, and they're good friends. Not friends. the not the uh, bad friends from jail, but the the good friends from the outside world. Us activists, hip hop artists, all the people in the community. Who we I can't wait to see the interview that he's going to do with someone like the King of Pot. Uh, you know, on June twenty seventh, after the charges are dismissed on the sidewalk, I can't wait to have him on this show. Yep, down here, whether it's by phone call, whether it's his family, his sister, his father. That's going to happen, and it's because of you folks that it's happening as soon as it's did. And uh, very exciting. Our caller, are you on the line? Did your uh, race start now? Can you talk to us? Uh, I'm, I'm here. The race is just finished. I'm happy to tell you that uh, we kicked Palace Malice and he came in. So uh, we're good run. You made some money. Well, we did. You know, it was, it was actually a big little event today. I'm here with uh, Carl Lamora and Shemdog and... Oh, yeah. uh, Two other liberty activists. Oh, is this Ian uh, Freeman? Huh? Is this Ian Freeman? This is Dan Fishman. Dan what? Fishman? Oh, Dan Fishman. You're <laughs> hanging out with some wild wind. <laughs> you, you get around in all crowds. Dan Fishman, ladies I, and gentlemen. What's up, brother? I, I do run around. Well, in this case, you know, it's one of those things that uh, a little bit of gambling brings everybody together. There you yeah, go. Sir. There you go. So you at Rockingham Downs right now? No, we're at uh, Suffolk. Suffolk Downs. Which, uh... I have to say, these guys, uh, they need some new management because they ran out of water today. Really? <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't think you could run out of water, but they ran out of water. So, so you're in a neck of the woods, huh? <laughs> it's been a long day at the track, but it ended happily, so I'm happy to call in, you know, and talk about Sandy D and talk about the fact that, uh, you know, this is one of those things where we have gone over the line. You know, we have a fundamental thing in the First Amendment that says, People have the right to say their mind. If it's been, you know, even in a situation where you are talking about an artistic performance, talking about an artist performing, when we start censoring that, when we start throwing people in jail, something like that, we have really lost our way. Yeah, definitely. So you're uh, you're also running now. It's official for our Beverly City Council, Dan Fishman. Beverly City Council, World War One. Yep. And uh, a yeah. lot of us think you actually could win this election. This may be the first time you've run where you could actually win? Is that safe to say? Yeah, no, I, 
I, I think I got a pretty good shot at this. I have a uh, strong name recognition. Uh, I've got the over uh, 300 votes in my ward during my congressional race. Uh, I have you know media contacts that uh, actually just when I pulled the papers, I didn't issue a press release or anything, but the uh, my media contacts picked up the story anyway. So uh, I like our chances, and you know it's an open seat. Uh, Twenty term incumbent is uh, standing down. And there's a definitive issue in our uh, race. Uh, Beverly, in February, passed a law saying that bars and liquor stores cannot accept out-of-state IDs for identification, which is ridiculous. There is a bar, everybody on the North Shore knows it, the Anchor. It is the best place to go get fish and chips. It's a fisherman's restaurant. And part of their business is that, you know, people come from all over. And they're famous. Salem next door has huge tourism industry. We have pretty big tourism. All these tourists come into this restaurant now, they can't buy a drink. That is hurting the economy. It's a silly law. Crazy. So you had a first-hand experience with this, though, um, it, in Beverly, right? Yeah, I mean, we had a personal experience with it where uh, a friend of mine has a, has a company that Amazon came in to go to their company. They wanted to uh, you know, potentially buy their company. They bring their guy in, they show him everything, they want him to have a good time. He's 30 years old, he's got a baby face, they take him out to a nice restaurant in Beverly, he gets carded and they won't serve him. It's uh. ridiculous. I mean, that really, that hurts business. And, you know, it's more than just those businesses as well. There's also, you know, a couple of big colleges in Beverly, Endicott, uh, Montserrat, Gordon, all those schools, you know, they're at a disadvantage now because seniors know when I turn 21, Unless I have an in-state driver's license, I'm not going to be able to buy a drink. Crazy. That's a real problem. They go and to it's Salem. That it's a huge overstepping of where municipal government should be going. Government should not be making laws like that. As far as I'm concerned, it's a violation of the 14th Amendment. If a city wants to make the whole city dry, that's one thing. But to discriminate against people who are out of town, who don't have a chance to go get a Massachusetts book ID, to me, that seems like that's not equal protection in the law. Hey, Dan, I want to thank you so much for calling. We're also about to bring up some other subjects in the show before we wrap it up for this week. I want to ask you about two of them, if you don't mind. Actually, I'm going to have Frank ask Yeah, go ahead. So, have Frank. So this is speed round. This you know is the do. speed round, Dan. You're a candidate. Yep, I'm You're candidate. a candidate. candidate. All right, so, uh, Dan, uh, PRISM program. Your thoughts. Which program? The, the PRISM the, program. The, the, the NSA. NSA direct pipeline into your Google, Skype, Pal Talk, Facebook. Verizon. Verizon network. Yeah, you know, this is, yeah, PRISM, it is. So it's not surprising. And if you think about it, Liberty activists have been talking about this for a long time. Uh, and personally, I would tell people that there are things you can do to make your email encrypted so that only the person you send it to can read it. Uh, there's an easy program, I'll just tell everybody, they can look it up, called Pretty Good Protection. It's free, it's from MIT, and if you and I have pretty good protection on our, on our email, when we send it out, you can read what I send to you, I can read what you send to me, but nobody else can read it. And I think that's a good thing for people to do anyway, but obviously the government is really overstepping at this point in time. So I'm a, I'm a computer scientist, I understand what they mean by metadata, and when they say the metadata is harmless to read, that is terrible. That is a flat-out lie. Is it? Metadata is very indicative yeah. of a lot of personal stuff. You know, they know who you call, where you call, when you call. And things that you have an expectation of privacy of, you know, for example, let's just say, hypothetically, and I, I, I'll admit to this, so when I research something on the, on the web, I go to a variety of different resources. I don't just stop at Fox, I don't just stop at NBC. I want to get everybody's opinion. And so I'll go international. I look at BBC. I look at Alvin Zero. Does the FBI think I'm a terrorist because they're their metadata they say, oh, Dan Fishman, he goes to the Al Jazeera website? They probably do. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're right, that metadata is so important. It's it protected, like, the corporations have to go through all this compliance not to release that to anybody and uh, use that commercially, but the government is saying, that, oh, that's not important. It, it's you're, you're so right on that. The last thing I wanted to bring up is uh, we've got uh, Pride Boston. We had a big rally today. And we're about to bring some Yeah, I wish I could have made it. Yeah, what, do you, what, what is your opinion on Pride Boston? What is, what I is, think it's a great event. I think that, you know, it's one of those things that when we talk about our fight for liberty, you know, a lot of times it's easy for us to get depressed and say, oh, you know, we haven't, uh, you know, how are we going to change things? How are we going to make people understand 
that the Republicans and the Democrats are really just flying to us at this point in time. They're maintaining the position. And it's easy for us to get let down. But when we do that, we should look at the two biggest civil rights movements in our lifetime. Right? There's a civil rights movement in the 60s. There's a civil rights movement going on right now. And we have, in many cases, said, listen, everybody is entitled to liberty, regardless of preference, regardless of color, regardless of religion. And so pride is not a celebration of justice, gay rights. It's a celebration of human rights. And we all should be celebrating that. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Dan, for uh, giving a call here today. And uh, don't be leaving uh, the Boston area until I give you a call after I get off the show here. I didn't realize you guys were so close, but we're going to uh, jump off right now. Thank you. Everybody support Dan Fishman. Do you have a website for your city council race yet? Uh, no, I haven't put anything yet. I, I, I pulled the papers. I'm officially announced in two weeks, uh, maybe on the show. All right. Awesome. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks, brother. Yeah. So you just heard that. A candidate for All office. Right. Beverly City Council, Dan Fishman. Beverly City Council, Ward 1. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, brother. He's, yeah. Bye. He's back announcing for us. He supports Cammy D getting right. out of jail and not having charges. All the calls we got, I think we had like 10 calls today. Yeah, everyone amazing. that called in was uh, awesome. I felt like I was like, a, um, you know, one of those people that take calls. Free and, Cammy uh, D, June 27th. Be there in Lawrence. That's right. June 27th, 11 p, uh, a.m., uh, Lawrence Courthouse. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, KOP. Thank you, Dan Fishman. Thank you, Petey. Thank you, Chance. On regular radio, digboston.com. Look for our picture you, in the newspaper. Women. Yes. Dig Boston. Digboston.com is and an next, awesome picture up of right us now, in there. Waiting patiently. We're over time. Citywide Black Up! Music coming up for you. Live music. On, on regular, regular radio. radio. This is Unregular Radio. radio.